I've got slightly concerned about the uh, camera there because what I'm going to say uh, won't be uh, uh, necessarily agreed by the Diocese of London or the Church of England. So I want to make it absolutely clear that I'm speaking uh, my own views, but I think uh, it's much more fun if we uh, say what we feel rather than what we're told to say. And I think it's a matter uh, of taking risks. And I want to say that the risk of letting go is something that I think Christians should commend to themselves this afternoon. And I say this because one of our very ancient hymns in the New Testament talks about Jesus emptying himself, taking the form of a slave, and being born in human likeness, and being found in that human form, he humbled himself and, uh, and became obedient unto death, even the death on the, of the cross. So this idea of self-emptying, uh, theologians talk about it as kenosis, self-emptying. And there's this point here of the divine being intimately involved in suffering. That may not commend itself to some of the people here. But it may be that our traditions can say that we should be allied with the divine cause. And some may go on to say that the divine may be allied with our cause. And what I want to suggest is that the idea of self-emptying should undergird how Christians approach working in a country now which houses multiple of faiths and also people who have none. What can't be denied is that many of our institutions in this country were founded by Christians and at one time had a Christian ethos. I'm thinking about schools, universities, hospices uh, and, and hospitals. Even sports clubs were founded by Christians. Uh, the local club here, was the QPR, Queen's Park Rangers, was founded by an amalgamation of the St. Jude's Institute and also uh, Christchurch Rangers, and both local... Uh, uh, the Christchurch Rangers I th must come, I think, from Christchurch, uh, uh, a little church round the corner, and that became Queen's Park Rangers, uh, which, of course, is no longer thought of as a specifically Christian boys' club, but has an international following uh, throughout the world. And similarly, Spurs. Spurs was founded by a Sunday school teacher called John Ripshaw, and he just wanted to have a club so that the local boys, instead of getting up to mischief, would have something to do on, on uh, weekends. And this became the, 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 the enormous, great, big, worldwide club, and no longer is, um, can be said to be a Christian club, because, and then it's, uh, it has a great big uh, Jewish following. It's n n known for its Jewish following. So there's something about setting something up uh, uh, here, but also emptying it so that it can have a life of, of, of its own. And that's really what I want to say, that how Christians should uh, look at interfaith now, having set all these institutions up, not s sitting on their privileges and saying, oh, we want to keep the ethos as, uh, 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 as Christian, but allowing other people to build into that ethos. And so those institutions have, uh, can take on their own lives. And, that's, and John Ripshaw himself uh, was a really remarkable person. I mean, having set up this great organization which became Spurs, he went to Dover and died in a workhouse, died in poverty. And there's something about his story, dying in poverty, but what he set up had this great newer life, which I think is something that Christians can identify with because it is very much the story of Christ himself. Thank you. Thank <clears throat> you.